Hey, I'm Ari Altman with the Tech Buyers Guru, and I'm introducing some great new products we'll be reviewing shortly on the website. Uh, about two months ago, I reached out to a number of manufacturers and asked if they were interested in submitting samples of their new AM4 compatible uh, CPU coolers. The response was so tremendous that we've actually had to break this into two different reviews. Uh, last month, we ran a liquid cooler shootout with four uh, coolers, and uh, this month we're going to be reviewing seven air coolers. These are all 120 millimeter based uh, coolers. Uh, all but two of these are actually brand new. Some of these are so new you can you can barely even buy them. That's how new they are. Um, so we're really excited to be able to review them and round them up all together all at once, so you can get a better idea of what's really the, the best solution for you at the right price point. Um, what's really interesting about these coolers is they're all they all fall into kind of a similar price range, actually between forty and sixty dollars. So they're all direct competitors, and, and it's it actually that makes this shootout all the more exciting because really they're going to have to go head to head on performance, features, uh, noise levels, etc. Back at the beginning of the year when Ryzen was a rumor, um, I spoke to AMD reps, and they said, "Yeah, we're going to have a nice lineup of coolers to go along with our CPUs." That didn't exactly happen when Ryzen launched in March. But the manufacturers have caught up. They realize Ryzen is for real. It's sticking around. It's not going anywhere. And it pays to, for them to upgrade their coolers for AM4 compatibility. Now, two of these coolers actually are just um, revised uh, existing coolers. That's the uh, ARO3 from Silverstone and the NHU12S from Noctua. Uh, Silverstone and Noctua right here in the back. These are exec actually existing coolers. They've been around for three or four years. Um, and simply have been updated with the bracket in the box. Okay, so you as a Ryzen owner can go out and buy this and know oh, I don't have to mail order the, the part, I don't have to wait for it to come in. It's going to be in the box for me. Um, the other five coolers we have are actually brand new. Let's start right over here with the Arctic. This is the Freezer 33 Esports e Edition. This is a really interesting cooler. Um, it's based on the uh, Freezer i32 that's been around for a while. Uh, but the big deal here is, of course, the color scheme. It's the eSports thing here going, you know, it's got to look good and perform, look as good as it performs. The other thing is you've got two fans. These are two of Arctic's upgraded Bionics fans, 120 millimeter. Um, they, this comes actually pre-assembled just like that, attached to your cooler. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to testing these. Arctic makes some really good mid-priced mid but very high performance fans. Next, we have some interesting coolers from Scythe. I'm so excited that Scythe is making a comeback. Scythe had some troubles uh, along the way, but if you've been in the CPU uh, community for a while, uh, sorry, the, the PC community for a while, you know about CPU coolers from Scythe. Scythe was one of the originators of high-performance CPU cooling. Um, over here, we've got their Mugen 5 Revision B. Over here, we've got their massive Fuma Revision B. Okay, these are both very high performance coolers, particularly for the price, at least that's what I'm assuming, based on their size. Uh, these are both around $45 to $50. The Mugen uses a solid piece of metal there and a single Cosflex fan. This is a brand new fan from Scythe. Scythe knows their fans. Uh, I've been running some Scythe fans for 10 years that are still as good as new. And this is their brand new Cosflex 120. Um, the Fuma, of course, is actually their highest performance 120 millimeter cooler. It uses dual towers and dual uh, slipstream fans. These fans are not fluid dynamic bearing fans, but they're very high airflow fans. So it's, it's an interesting contrast. As Scythe explained to me when they shipped these out, they said, this, this is the cooler for high performance. Okay, And actually kind of, it goes to show, look at that chrome plating they use on the top of these towers. They're really showing off here with this cooler. Most most coolers don't use chrome plating. Um, this is their high performance cooler. The Mugen is their, their balance cooler. It uses just one fan. Um, in the middle here, look, this is the smallest cooler, but it's actually potentially the most interesting. This is Noctua's brand new NHL12S. It's been two years in the making. Uh, low profile aficionados have really probably been waiting on this for a long time. Uh, Noctua has never really had a cooler quite like this. 70 millimeters tall. 120 millimeter fan. This is a custom designed brand new fan just for this cooler. 15 millimeters thick to allow for clearance of 35 millimeters for your RAM. Very important. Um, you can also mount that fan on top. It's 
to provide more clearance, but really for low profile systems, that 70 millimeter height is really what counts. And uh, there are very few fans like that, like this out on the market, and none have the AM4 bracket in the box. This one's brand new, so it does. Last cooler I'll mention is Cryorig's updated H7. We did a shootout earlier in the year of 120 millimeter coolers on the Intel platform. The H7 won that shootout. This is the upgraded H7 with a fourth heat pipe. This is called the Quad Lumi. Okay, so Quad for fourth and Lumi for uh, illumination. It has a, an illuminated Cryorig logo and an illuminated fan. It's all RGB effects. It's controlled through NZXT's CAM software. Interestingly, Cryorig being a fairly new small hardware company couldn't invest the time into creating its own software. So it went to essentially a competitor. NZXT makes its own coolers as well. But they're borrowing NZXT software. It's a really interesting approach. I've seen that in, in, in interviewing companies along the way. I've seen that a lot of hardware manufacturers really shy away from creating software. It's a completely different uh, pursuit. Uh, a lot of the smaller hardware manufacturers simply don't have the software engineers uh, that you'd need to create really good software. So Cryorig being a new company and really focused on hardware and doing a really good job on hardware is not going to try to do something it, it can't perfect in that like software. So this, uh, this uh, cooler actually uses uh, NZXT software and a USB interface, very interestingly. So that that's actually plugs into your USB um, header on the motherboard. So, hey, uh, I think this should be really exciting. It should be a really uh, good competition. Ultimately, you know, uh, a winner take all here. And, but um, as, as we did in the liquid cooler shootout, it's not just flat out performance. There needs to be a balance. It needs to be quiet. It needs to be uh, easy to install. It needs to look good. Um, all of these things will be considered. So uh, while we will be finding, of course, the highest performance cooler among these seven coolers, we're also going to be naming kind of an all around winner. And it may or may not be the same cooler. So it should be interesting. Again, um, this is a really exciting time, and we, uh, I think we all have to thank AMD for, for fighting the good fight here and coming back because with its new AM4 platform, the Ryzen CPU, um, manufacturers are stepping up and saying, this is really interesting. We want to produce some new coolers. This is a great time to produce new coolers because people are going out there and buying Ryzen CPUs. So, hope you're looking forward to this shootout. You'll find it on Tech Buyers Guru soon enough, and until then, uh, Enjoy your PCs.